Geomagic Wrap gives users access to a vast amount of custom automation using recordable macros and textual Python scripting. The applications for automation in Wrap range from linking a small number of tools from the UI together for efficiency purposes in your workflow, all the way up to large, bespoke scripts interfacing with hardware or doing custom mesh or point cloud processing routines. Honestly, the applications for scripting and automation in 3D scanning are limited only by your creativity, so there's no way to introduce every possible concept in this short video. What I'll do instead is speak to the primary ways we can offload manual, repetitive tasks from the user in Geomagic Wrap, who they're intended for, and what they're best at doing. Let's start with macros, which are likely the first option a new user would explore in the software. The macro commands can be found on the Tools tab in the ribbon. When a new macro is recorded, any supported commands opened and ran by the user will be remembered, along with the settings selected, so that the sequence of commands and settings can be saved and rerun on a future model. We'll give this new macro a name and click through a couple commands to convert this point cloud into a watertight mesh, then optimize it for auto-surfacing before exporting a step file. It's important to remember that any manual point or polygon selection in the graphics window, along with any model manager selections, will not be allowed while recording a macro. That said, you can still take advantage of some of the selection options on the Tools tab, especially the Select by Object, which can record selecting a model manager object by data type, name, or position in the list. When a macro recording is stopped, it is automatically saved to the macros directory specified in Options. A list of recent macros are available to run directly from the Tools tab. All macro recordings can be found on the Scripting console. Clicking on the new macro in the left column here will open the Scripting Editor, where the commands and options can be viewed and edited. The rest of the lines here all start with Geodot, indicating their Geomagic commands, and then the command name, and then a series of values in parentheses. Taking the auto surface as an example, there are 12 values that correspond to the various radio buttons, checkboxes, and sliders in the command. The values in these positions can be changed and re-ran while dialing in a script. Generally, all measurement values are in meters and decimal degrees, regardless of what the units in the GUI are set to. So far, all we've done is create an automated process that will run on a single mesh imported into RAP. Macros can work with multiple pre-selected files for some operations like registration and merging that support them, but if I have a number of similar files that I'd like to run the same routine on, I could either load each file manually, wait for the script to run, and then load the next and repeat, or I could use the batch processing command in wrap to point the script at multiple files to run sequentially, which is obviously more efficient. We've already covered the batch processing in Control-X and Design-X in their own videos, and wrap's version isn't much different. The input group requests the directory containing the files to be processed and whether they should be opened, which creates a new document or imported, which doesn't, and allows for multiple files to be added into one session. The Actions group allows us to define what needs to be done to each file, whether it should save a file, and in what format, and what it should be called. The Output group asks where the file should be saved, and what should be done in the event of an error. If we want to be more proactive with our automation, we can use the macro server to monitor a folder for new data to run macros on, but this is mostly a legacy feature that is more often used by Control-X customers or solved with textual scripting and wrap. I'm also not spending much time on the logging function, which acts similar to a macro but does include mouse clicks and movements. This logs and replaces selections, model rotations, etc. during a session and could be used to automate certain workflows, but in practice it's mainly used to interact with our support team when debugging a workflow or diagnosing a crash. The real fun with automation in Geomagic Wrap comes with textual scripting. The software comes with Python version 3.4 pre-installed, which opens up immense potential beyond what a user is able to do with macros or within the GUI. The scripting console makes it easy to copy and paste code snippets between scripts to test small portions of functionality, and from 2021 onwards, we've had contextual highlighting similar to what you'd see in Notepad++ or Spider or most other Python consoles. Comments are in green, strings are in red, keywords in blue, etc. The error list and console appear below the editor. A recorded macro can act as a starting point for a Python script, but most using this feature choose to use pure Python to call up the geomagic libraries. We call this APP or API scripting. Each Python script will need to import the geomagic module, generally handled in the first line of code. 
Now, this video is by no means intended to function as either a deep dive into API scripting and wrap or a tutorial for Python. For those, I would recommend turning to the included scripting documentation that's easiest to access from this link on the Getting Started tab for the former and one of any number of free or paid ways to learn how to code for the latter. Instead, let's look at a couple Python examples not from the scripting documentation. Something that would be very inefficient for a user to accomplish manually is patterning. This script for a 3D printed tooling application imports an STL from a CAD application, remeshes it into uniform triangles so it can remove boundaries by a certain offset for clearance, and then converts to a point cloud which is uniformly sampled. The position and normal vector of each point is iterated through to create a cylinder of a set diameter and height to be created normal to the original surface. Finally, those cylinders are converted back to mesh bodies and exported for another program to Boolean cut perforations into a fixture. A wrap script can be called from the command line or within another program by invoking wrapcore.exe and then pointing parameters to the directory where the Python script is saved. When wrapcore is ran, the software does not bring up a GUI, so many scripts run much faster this way. To summarize, Macros record commands and settings in a specific order that can be reran on future files. Batch processing can be used to run a macro or script on a number of individual files in a row. Macros can be edited in the textual editor, used as starting points or snippets in Python scripts, or Python paired with the Geomagic API libraries can be used to create larger routines that can interact with other programs, include logic and math, and run faster without calling up the GUI. Customers on maintenance can work with our application support team on their own scripting use cases. That just about concludes the discussion of automation options in Geomagic Wrap. The examples shown barely scratch the surface of what is possible in Wrap with a little bit of Python know-how. See you in the next video.